One of the most stressful ordeals facing any of us is the job interview. What is it that you want to get out of the position? But with only one job for every ten candidates, the chances of success are slim. It's almost like pulling teeth, just trying to get it was painful. something out of it. It was painful. But this man believes he can upset the odds. Business psychologist Dr. Rob Young claims that he can turn anyone into a confident interviewee. I've let off farts that are more assertive than this girl. Today, Rob will be eavesdropping on three real interviewees as they go head to head for one real job. Who will make such a mess of things that they qualify for Rob's no holds barred training? Look at me. What are your strengths? I don't see any evidence that you have a personality. I've tried conjoling, I've tried being angry, I've tried persuading, and nothing's working. TV facilities company Picture It are on the lookout for a new office junior. We want enthusiasm, motivation, and this is me and this is why I want this job. The job may only come with a starting salary of 10 grand, but it's a golden opportunity to break into the TV industry. It is very tough at the moment, so everyone's fighting for these few opportunities. With so much at stake, these three hopefuls will have to be at the top of their game. The interviews are going to be tough, but they're going to be fair. We need them to sell themselves, go with the flow and maybe even blag it a bit. It's interview day. While our inquisitors are hoping to find their perfect candidate, Rob Young is on a mission to identify the worst of the lot. He'll then attempt, in just three days, to turn this no-hoper into an employer's dream. It's time for the first candidate of the day. Hi, Graham. Interesting. A candidate wearing a T-shirt to an interview. Grab a seat. No matter how casual the job, I'd suggest you at least wear a shirt and a jacket, but not a T-shirt. Another thing is to have a shave before an interview. It looks scruffy at the moment. What has been your biggest mistake? Probably not, not going to university, choosing not to do that. Because... The question is a huge trap to fall into. Don't confess to something huge like the fact that your whole career is a mistake or that you should have gone to university. Think small. Next up is candidate number two. How are you doing? Wow, first impressions are great. Big beaming smile, dressed really smartly, looking really professional, just the job. So what interests you about this job? I want to work in the media and it's the range that this job covers because you do This like... is a really superb performance. She's really using her hands well. She makes her seem really dynamic, energetic. What would you say has been your biggest mistake? I find it hard to look at things as mistakes. I kind of... There's no point dwelling on the past. That was a great response, turned what could have been a trap into a, a very good response, showing her cunning. It's now the turn of the third and final candidate. At least it would be if she was actually here. I can hear steps. Finally, here's our candidate. Have a seat. My first impression is that the candidate looks quite nervous, sitting there, not smiling very much, looking slightly in awe of the whole situation. Relax, this isn't interrogation. To use a technical psychological term, she looks a little bit gormless. What about the role that we're offering? Well, it's, you? It seems like quite a nice company. It's quite fun. I think there'll be a lot to learn. And it just... <laughs> what this candidate is doing in every single sentence she says is finishing off in a very quiet manner. You need to be assertive. I've let off farts that are more assertive than this girl. Um, you say that you're great at working under pressure and to tight deadlines. Can you give any past experience of this at all? Um, um. Well, it doesn't have to be in employment, it could be within social life, personal life. School. No? Okay, no, it's all right. Okay. Absolutely stumped. The interviewers are really trying to help her out, but it's obvious she's done no preparation. Um, what would your weakness be, or weaknesses? Um. Oh, um, or could you improve on any skills that you may have, such as organisation or punctuality? Um, this is a tough one. You don't really plan to think of that one. Um. 
This is quite painful to watch, really. I don't, I don't know. Okay, that's right, though. Fair enough. You've really got to come up with something. Saying, I don't know, is not acceptable. It's decision time. Which candidate has landed the job? After her confident display, the interviewers have little hesitation in picking number two. She's got get up and go. She's gone and done things. She's enthusiastic. She's the one, I think. But there's someone else whose interview was a total turn-off. 19-year-old Kirsty McCulloch. Bad start, she was late. It was like we were having to do all of the work. Yeah, it wasn't a conversation. She didn't come back with anything. There was a couple of questions I couldn't answer. I didn't, didn't know what to say, but I think apart from that, it went fine. It was painful. It was painful. Rob believes that in just three days, he can turn anyone into a job winner. But Kirsty's interview was such a disaster, will she prove to be beyond help? So, why don't we have a look at the tape and actually see what the interviewer said about you in the debrief afterwards, and we'll go from there, OK? Mm -hmm. So, overall impressions on, on Kirsty's interview? I'd say she lacked enthusiasm. Yeah. And there was no real sparkle there. She was terrified. You were bunning the headlights. Trick. Yeah. Do you realise that? Mm -hmm. Well, interviews can be nerve-wracking. But, yeah. And she missed the opportunity to answer the obvious cliched interview questions. It's odd yeah. because her, her CV mm -hmm. has got some good experience in there. Yeah. yeah, but obviously you need the personality with it. Do you have a personality? Yes. So why don't you show it? If Kirsty's to have any hope of getting a job, Rob knows she needs to learn three key things. How to project her personality how to prepare, and how to perform under pressure. Unhappy in her job as a filing clerk with a firm of architects, Kirsty McCulloch is desperate to broaden her horizons. All she's doing is sitting there on the computer all day. She doesn't want to be doing that. She wants to be up, talking to people, um, being friendly, communicating and all things like that. Like most 19-year-olds, Kirsty craves a job that offers her more excitement. But there's a problem. The real Kirsty is just chatty, outgoing. Like, she's got a really, really big personality, but when it comes down to like, interviews, she just gets really shy and her personality doesn't really come out. Until Kirsty learns to overcome her interview demons, she has little prospect of getting anywhere. She came from the interview and she felt she'd done very well at the interview and um, she didn't get the job, and she worried about it. She worried that she wasn't as good as she thought she was. Kirsty has just three <laughs> days in which to turn things around. Come on, what do you think your strengths are? Three days in which she'll be pushed to the limit. No, come here. I don't, no, I don't want to. Let go. Will she respond to Rob's unique brand of training? She's leaving. Or will it all end in tears? There's nothing I can do. It's day one. Rob knows that in an interview, it's not what you say, but the way that you say it that's the key to success. <laughs> Although Kirsty's friends call her bubbly and outgoing, in her interview, she lacked any hint of personality. And so Rob's brought Kirsty to Spitalfields Market to show her what a difference a little charm can make. So what we're going to do is get you to push in front of a queue of hungry people at this pie stall, using your charm and your personality. So how do you feel about that? <laughs> it's not that difficult, is it? No, it's just rude. It isn't rude. I'm not asking you to, to F and blind your way into the queue. I'm asking you to persuade, to charm, to be polite, to do whatever it takes. Let's give it a go. Come on. <laughs> Come on, just give it a go. I don't want to... I can't... You can. I don't know. That's rude. It isn't rude. Get in there quickly. I can't do it. I can't do that. You can. I can't. You can do it. I can't do this. I can't. I can't do it. I'm not doing it. What's all this finger chewing, eh? You can do it. What? All you need to do is go up to them and flutter your pretty eyelashes at them and say, it would help me out so much if I could just jump in the queue. Watch Rob. Who ate all the pies? Me. <laughs> 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 
Have you ordered yet? Yeah, sorry. Would it kill you if I just pushed in the queue because I'm just late for a meeting? Is that all right? Thank you very much. <coughs> Are you watching? That's all I'm asking you to do. But the whole point is, if you can persuade someone to do something in this kind of situation, then you can persuade them to let you have a job. Don't pick, don't chew your nails. It's a sign of nerves. Oh, it's because I'm nervous. Kirsty, say it. If I can do this, I can do anything. Look no, at me. I can't. <laughs> say it. If I can do this, I can do anything. And again, look at me, no. say it. No, no, I don't want to do it no more. Look, I'm going to walk away in a minute because I really don't want to do it. I will walk away. At the moment, I don't see any evidence that you have a personality. If you tried and failed, I'd let you off. But you're not even trying. I don't want to do it. Fine. If you're going to have a sulk, have a sulk about it. Kirsty takes Rob up on his offer. I'm at a complete loss. I've tried cajoling her, I've tried being her friend, I've tried being angry, and nothing's working. If she won't help herself, then nothing can force her to do it. But this is a battle that Rob can't afford to lose. As long as Kirsty remains so inhibited and self-conscious, her personality will never shine through in an interview. In another attempt to force her to come out of her shell, Rob's decided to make Kirsty sing for her supper. So we are going to busk and try and earn some money. Would you be happy singing with me? No. Why? Why not? <laughs> no. Why? Because I don't want to sing. Why not, though? I can't sing. I don't want to sing. I can't sing. I don't want to sing. Will you at least hold the cue cards? Because I don't know the words to the song. I'll hold the cue cards, but I'm not singing. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> young man, there's no need to feel down. I said, young man, pick yourself off the ground. I said, young man, cause you're in a new town. There's no need to be unhappy. Young man, there's a place you can go. I said, young man, put your pride on the shelf and just go there to the YMCA. I'm sure you can help you today. Fun to stand, YMCA. OK, with me. No. YMCA. No, I don't. Oh, no, I don't want to do it. So why try and make me do it? Do you not understand when I don't want to do things? I don't want to do it. Come back here and just no. please say, say you're not going no. to do it to me. No. Come here. I don't. No, I don't want to. Let go. Where are you going? Shh. She's leaving. Oh, I'm sorry. Where are you going? She's leaving. There is nothing I can do, short of physically restraining her. There is nothing she wants to do. There is nothing she is willing to do. I've never worked with someone so frustrating in all my life. It's the end of day one, and Rob has hit a brick wall. It seems that in Kirsty, he has met his match. Rob's doing his job, but I think he's pushing me too hard. I didn't want to do something, and he would try and make me do it. It's just, I don't see the point of it. I didn't have confidence the other day, so why am I going to have it all of a sudden today? It doesn't pop out of nowhere. It's day two of Rob's interview training. If 19-year-old Kirsty McCulloch is ever to impress in an interview, then she has to learn to project her personality. But Kirsty is proving to be as stubborn as she is self-conscious. Rob's adamant that this must be addressed once and for all. In that interview, you were a little bit mousy. You weren't projecting your voice. So I've brought you here to this bridge and I'm going to get you to project your voice. We're going to have a conversation and we're going to back off from each other. And I want you to keep talking louder and louder, throwing your voice out there, really projecting until I can hear you from one end of the bridge to the other. So how do you feel about that? I don't want to shout. 
No, no, it's not about shouting though. It's about projecting your voice. Yeah. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, where ten is crapping yourself, how do you feel? Eleven. Okay, good. <laughs> because that's how we want you. We want you kind of ready to go. So why don't you just walk over there, about ten feet. So, Kirsty, what, what would you say your strengths are? I don't want to do... I don't want to shout! You don't need to shout, I can hear you perfectly well. We're just ten feet away from each other. Hang on. <clears throat> don't be so worried, don't be so worried. OK? Don't be so worried. Are you OK? Yeah, I suppose. OK. I'm just going to back off a couple of feet and I want you to just answer the question. So, what are your strengths? I don't... It's okay, it's okay. Oh, I don't want to do this. Why? I'm not, I don't, I'm not confident enough, I don't want to do it. Sorry? I'm not confident enough, I don't want to do it. Why, why though? Why don't you want to do it? Because I don't. I don't, I really, I just don't want to do this. I can't, I can't answer these questions. No, I don't no, know the answers. <laughs> I can't, no, 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 but... If I can't answer them to an interviewer, I can't answer them to you. Let's work out the answer first. I'll go blank, I, like I always do. But with a little help from Rob, Kirsty manages to come up with something. So what would you say your strengths are? Friendly and approachable, hard-working and organised. OK, a bit louder. No. <coughs> just a little bit louder. Come on, look into my eyes and tell me, what are your strengths? Friendly and approachable, hard-working and organised. Come on, louder, though. I want you to really push that voice out. Look at me. What are your strengths? Friendly and approachable, hard-working and organised. Is that as loud as you get? Yes. Come on, that is not loud. Friendly and approachable, hard-working and organised! I'm not doing that. I'm not asking you to do that, but if I'm making such a prat of myself, the least you can do is just project your voice at me. Just do it once, really loudly. We are done. Turn up to ten. Go! What are your strengths? I'm friendly and approachable, hard-working and organised. <sighs> We're finished. Okay, let's get out of here. That wasn't so bad, was it? Yes. Well, you should wait till you see what I've got next in store for you. <laughs> what are we doing next? I'm going to throw you off this bloody bridge. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, you're hard work, you know. Finally, it appears that Rob is making some progress but Kirsty's still light years away from where she needs to be. On the evidence of her dismal interview, it's clear that Kirsty had thought about neither any of the questions or her answers in advance. And Rob knows that a successful candidate is always one that's well prepared. What we're trying to do is create just a, a couple of sentences so that it sounds like a conversation. Because in an interview, you should be talking about 60, 70% of the time how do you handle stress at work? I should get on with it, but I find that the more work that I have, the better I work. Whenever you're talking about your strengths or your skills, rather than just saying, you know, I do this, I think it's a skill, it's always great when you can say, someone else said this about me as well. I find it hard to say no when people ask me to do things. That's a fantastic one. Rob now decides to turn up the heat. So. Tell me about yourself. I am very committed and I will always work to the best of my ability. What are your weaknesses in your current job? I also find it hard to say no. No, it's gone again. Nearly. Nearly. What are your strengths? I like being busy and if I have nothing to do then I always find something to do. How do you think you handle stress at work? Um, I just get on with it, but I find scraping for work more stressful than having too much. Thank you very much. You want to be a butcher? <laughs> <laughs> She may have landed a job in the meat trade, but Kirsty is still not ready to face her ultimate challenge. In less than 24 hours, Rob's planning to put her through a nerve-jangling mock interview, the definitive test of just how far she's come. Rob may have worked on Kirsty's personality and preparation, but she still has one major hurdle to overcome. Rob believes that all interviews are a performance and that even under pressure, it's vital to make an impact. And so he's brought Kirsty on a killer cure trip to Birmingham. Here, in front of 300 paying customers, she will take to the stage. 
dressed as a clown. Hi guys, if I can introduce you to Kirsty. Hi Kirsty. Right, basically today what you're going to be learning is traditional British slapstick comedy. It involves lots of water, lots of pace, having lots of confidence in yourself, the general public which is out there, making yourself larger than life, and also eye contact with the actual individual people and all that. How do you feel about that? Nervous. Nervous? Mm. I think you'll be all right. Don't worry about it. OK, follow me. Good luck. Despite the vote of confidence, Kirsty still has an exacting routine to learn, and fast. It's make or break now. Nothing's worked so far. Nothing's boosted her confidence. If this doesn't work, well, this has got to work. It's just got to work. You'll be just waving at people like... So do you take it to your side? Bang, I fall down. If she's going to pull it off tonight, she's going to have to put a lot more oomph into it. OK, I know it's only a rehearsal, but I want energy, enthusiasm, because remember, in that interview, it's a performance. You've got to make eye contact with the crowd. They've got to believe you're having a good time, otherwise they're not going to have a good time. They're going to think, oh, who's that sad old clown? I'm worried about her. She seems so apathetic at the moment. She stood there with her fingers stuck in her jeans. She just doesn't care. Go for it. Energy, okay? Right. Feel comfortable? <laughs> no. What do you feel comfortable about? I don't know, it's just nerve-wracking. The secret is, as long as you make yourself look busy, you'll get away with murder. Yeah. It's showtime. And for Kirsty, there's nowhere to hide. As she waits to go on, there's little Rob can do now but offer some words of encouragement. You're right. Yeah, speak to me. Fine. Fine. Once more, with a bit more passion and confidence. Terrifying. I hope you'll be fine. Come here. Make up, make up, make up. <laughs> OK, relax. Pop your hat on. Go for it. Okay. As Kirsty enters the ring, will she at last be able to let herself go? This is a different casting. She's performing. She's making eye contact with 300 people. Two days ago, she couldn't make eye contact with two bloody people. <laughs> I would have paid good money to have done that yesterday. She's exciting a crowd. I never, ever thought we would get to this day. But Kirsty's ordeal isn't over just yet. The show's finale contains a familiar number, which only yesterday had her on the verge of tears. You know you're amazing. You were good. You know you're good. Well done. I done the circus today. Uh, I didn't think I could do it. I done it. It went well. But we'll just have to wait and see tomorrow if it has helped in any way. It's day three, and time to find out if any of Rob's training has rubbed off. It's time for Kirsty's interview from hell. Rob has instructed two actors to probe for every weakness. But which Kirsty will turn up? The Kirsty who held her own in front of a packed circus crowd, or the tongue-tied version 
just a few short days ago. Um, I don't, I don't know. Okay, that's right then. Hello. Nice to meet you. Wow, she looks much better, dressed in a suit. That first interview, she was wearing an anorak, for heaven's sakes. Um, really good body language. She's leaning in, which shows that she's interested, really engaged, paying attention to every word that's being said. So, Kirsty, tell me, what gives you the most satisfaction in your job at the moment? When I get... Like, there's a lot of... Where I've only been there six months, there was a lot of filing that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And when I finish it, when, like, when I sort out of the filing system and finish it, I, that, that feels good. And I, I walk around and like, oh, thank you, Kirsty. I'm like, that's OK. <laughs> yeah. OK. And what would you say are your three key strengths? I think that I am organised from all the filing that I do. Yeah. Um, hard working, I will always work, work as hard as I can, and friendly. She's now talking in the interview, rather than just saying, these are my strengths, she's giving examples of why they are her strengths. The interviewers now hit Kirsty with the question that just a few days ago left her literally speechless. And what about your weaknesses? <clears throat> I find it hard to say no. If people ask me to do things, I will always do it. And then that's when my work keeps building up and then I get a bit stressed. But it all comes together in the end. <laughs> Encouraged by Kirsty's performance so far, yeah. Rob prompts the interviewers to probe even more. Yeah, have, have you sort of worked out ways of, of dealing with that, of saying, no, actually, I'm doing this at the moment? Or? Well, then when it comes to filing, what, to resolve that, what I've done now is I've set up an intro in every office. This is a curveball question. It's one that we genuinely haven't prepared, and she's dealing with it. I go around for an hour every day and see who needs the filing done, and whatever's there, I just file away, which seems to have helped a bit. <laughs> this has been such hard work. She has been the stroppiest person I've ever worked with, I think, and I can say that with hand on heart, but it's all been worth it. I'd like to say I own my own business. Those first interviewers called her a bunny in the headlights. Gone is that bunny. The bunny is dead. Well, thank you very much for your time. Nice well done. You. Thank you. Thanks, Kirsty. Well, hey! How do you feel? Good. Well done. <laughs> that was the interview of your life, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm really proud. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well done. You deserve it, you know. A few days ago, I did think, no chance. I thought it would have been exactly the same as before. But then I went in there and it was just, I felt different. Two weeks after filming ended, Kirsty got the chance to put her new skills to the test. I went for an interview in a snooker hall and I got the job straight away. I wasn't nervous because I knew what I would have to say. The whole experience, I think, has helped me a lot because I've now got a new job that I will enjoy.